Okay, so <clears throat> unfortunately yesterday when we were playing this game, this is how we were presenting our information for HIV AIDS for chapter 20. Um, just a reminder, you do have a quiz that opens up, I believe it is Friday. Yeah, from Friday, I don't remember the time, but until Monday at 11.59. Um, and it is only going to be about HIV and AIDS. And I want to make sure that you all understand to please take note that the questions are going to come from what I'm talking about in this lecture. Um, obviously, this is not the lecture from the class because my computer, I, I thought I plugged it in. I didn't. It died. And then I wasn't able to save it. So I, 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 I truly apologize for that. Um, we did have some good questions, but anything... I don't think that there's going to be anything missed, if you will. So everything, and I will make sure, of course, to not put something on there that is not or has not been covered. So um, you have that quiz. It's on chapter 20. It uh, opens on Friday. And um, I think that's really, uh, there were a couple of housekeeping things. You all did very well on your tests. Um, great job. Um, very, I was very happy to see that. Very well explained um, on your short answers. This is just the housekeeping stuff real quick before we get started. And um, I've definitely seen a growth, and especially in these times where we've had to move to online, that was very um, impressive. So I, I hope that you realize that you guys are really, um, you know, doing what you need to do, getting it done, and, and I'm proud of you, so. Okay, so <laughs> your uh, quiz is going to consist of, as well as your test, um, but let's focus on the quiz first, one day at a time, right? So your quiz is going to consist of anything I talk about on here. It's going to consist as well as anything in your workbook for chapter 20. It could be questions that were assigned. It could be questions that were not assigned. It could be questions in the back of the um, uh, workbook, which I have posted the answers that are correct so that you know that you got it correct, as well as it could be from the book in the back of those questions. So pretty much that's what the, the quiz is going to be based on, this and all of those other things I just said. So if you do those simple things um, that probably will not take more than an hour and a half, maybe an hour, um, you should get a 10 out of 10 on your quiz. Okay, so let's just go ahead and begin. I'm, I'm basically doing a mock-up. This is gonna be pretty quick. Um, I won't say much more than is necessary because I won't have questions, but I will add little things here and there that I remembered from yesterday. And again, I am so sorry. Okay, and I did fix most of the typos <laughs> from yesterday. So let's just start, we'll just kind of go across the board here. So HIV AIDS. What body system does the HIV virus attack in general? So we know that the HIV virus is a virus and it attacks, what, a, what are we talking about right now? Um, chapter 18 and 19 was the immune system, correct? So H, the HIV virus is going to attack the immune system and this will build obviously um, two harder questions. So we start, there's again, a method to the madness, if you will. I think we're gonna just go down all the way and then keep going this way so we'll go here next what is one of the main goals of treating hiv other than spreading it to other people so of course we want to um not spread hiv to other people but thinking about it critically i mean why is one reason so important to treat hiv and know that you hate that you have hiv and why the testing is so important is of course we don't want to have our HIV then turn into AIDS because once it turns into AIDS, it's a much more dangerous process. Opportuni <laughs> opportuni I'm so sorry. There's the, I'm just gonna say it the other way. There is the opportunity for other things to affect your body because your immune system is so low that it cannot fight it. So your body's allowing, unfortunately, the opportunity for that to happen. So the answer to that, is going to be uh, to prevent, um, that should say AIDS. I apologize. I thought I fixed this. I tried. Um, so to prevent AIDS. So obviously not to prevent HIV, but to prevent AIDS. Yeah. And most of you are probably listening to this anyway. So you're listening to my voice, not the um, <laughs> uh, Jeopardy. 
Um, this is not really that important. I only added it because the book did mention it and I just wanted it to be out there. There are two types of HIV. I know nothing really specifically about the difference between the two because HIV-1 is in the United States. That's what I've learned about. That's what we talk about. So whenever we say HIV and we're talking about HIV, really we're talking about HIV-1, which is in the United States, um, more in the African um, area, that is HIV-2. So, I mean, it's kind of cool just to know, just food for thought that there are two types, but that's not something that I'm going to expect you to remember or that I'm going to test you on. It's more food for thought. So just knowing that, yes, there are more, more than one type, HIV-1 and HIV-2. Okay. True or false? In the United States, those who are taking antiretroviral medications, those are the medications that we take when um, someone is diagnosed with HIV to help um, decrease the replication of HIV and help to prevent someone going from the whole, the whole big, big point is preventing AIDS. We want to prevent AIDS. We want to stay in, and HIV is not curable, right? It's there. It's not going anywhere. So we want to keep that manageable. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So true or false in the United States, those who are taking, talking, sorry, taking antiretroviral medications as prescribed usually will develop AIDS. That would be false. I'm so, sorry, true. So okay, that's like a double negative. So in the United States, those who are taking antiretroviral medications um, as prescribed will usually never develop AIDS. That's going to be true. That's a double negative. So they're not going to usually get AIDS. In the book, I think it says like, it, it's a definitive black and white. If you take your antiretroviral medications, you're doing your regimen, you're not going to get, go from HIV to AIDS. As I said yesterday in the lecture, I'm not like a black and white person. I, I mean, could it happen? I, I mean, I'm not trying to create stories, but what if you didn't take it properly? Or what if this, or what if that, who knows? So, but overall, especially nowadays, you're taking good care of yourself um, and you're HIV positive, taking your medications, doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's a very low probability that you're going to um, develop AIDS, which is great. This is great. And hopefully we're getting closer to a cure. But it's definitely not what it used to be, which is a death sentence, which we did talk about. And I'm going to mention little things here and there, um, but this is not going to be a long presentation. Um, it, it, it's, it's not a death sentence. And I, I had asked um, the open-ended question yesterday, kind of like, well, what would you guys say to someone if you were in a clinic and someone just found out? And a lot of lay people may not completely understand. I mean, you hear, I mean, HIV is, it, it's a very scary word to hear. I mean, even if you know about it, it's a, in my opinion, it's a scary word to hear. And, you know, what would you potentially, how would you react to this situation as being that person's nurse? And maybe how would you open the line of communication? And there were two people to answer that gave very, very good answers, different answers, but put them together. And it was, it was a perfect amount of, you know, what are, you know, obviously getting your patient to kind of come down a little bit, calm down and let them know that you're going to explain what this process means, that it's not what it used to be. I'm of course not sugarcoating things or trying to minimize, but I want to explain to you what's going to happen. This is not considered how it was in the eighties and this, that, the other. And then when somebody had mentioned, um, you know, what do you know about HIV? What, what, what do you know already? which is actually something that might come up on the NCLEX, by the way. That's like an open-ended question. But what do you already know so that you can kind of help fill in the gaps? Because your patient might say, I know that now I'm going to get AIDS and I'm going to die before I'm 40. I don't know. Just making that up. So that's very, very important. This is a very, very therapeutic process and very important to, um, even though you know the facts, your patient may not. And it's going to potentially be absolutely terrifying. Okay. Last one on the here for this one. True or false? One is more likely to get and potentially die from the flu if they have AIDS. I think we all know the answer to that, and that is absolutely true. Unfortunately, again, we talked about the immune system. That was the first question. So if you have AIDS, 
at this point, your immune system is below a certain amount. I'm not going to say because that comes later. And your body, it has so much trouble fighting things off when you don't have enough immunity. So that would be absolutely true. Your body is going to have a lot more trouble fighting off just the common flu that somebody could fight off in three days. It could potentially um, take their lives, which is very sad. Okay, we're going to move on now to infection and phases, starting at the top here. Is HIV curable? I think I've said it twice already. It is not curable at this point. They have not, um, I don't know where I read this, if it was in the book or a journal or somewhere, but they haven't really found that gene and, and, and been able to, it's kind of like addiction. Of course, got to throw that in. Um, we haven't found that gene yet in order to help to be able to cure it. So it's kind of like years and years and years ago when we weren't able to cure polio or all these other things. That's where we are with HIV. We definitely, I feel, are getting closer. Um, and I'm delighted that we at least have the medication to have people be able to live um, pretty, pretty normal lives, if you will, um, at this point, at least. Yeah. And hopefully a cure is coming. What year was HIV first discovered? I think this is important. I mean, it's important to know like how long it's been around because then that's a better way to educate your patients to let them know, hey, this has been around this long. This is where we started. This is where we are now. We've had so much research. It's, it's good to give, in my opinion, depending on the situation, patients some sort of information and um, evidence-based information and that can validate what you're saying as well um, and allow some credit. 1981 was when it was first discovered can't remember and I said this yesterday I think it was 80 it's either 83 or 85 that they got a test for but it, it, I, I it doesn't matter that's not something that I'm going to ask you about but 1981 is when they discovered it and at that point it was um they called it grid um and those of you who watched Grey's Anatomy all know what I'm talking about because you probably watched this episode and oddly enough I watched it the night on accident it came on my Hulu I don't know where my Netflix that that episode, um, but grid was in the reason they they called it that was because it was mainly as associated with the gay community. So I think a lot of you know that in the beginning HIV was very very um, isolated to the male gay community um, due to anal sex, which we will talk about a little bit later and why why that happened. So 1981 is when HIV was discovered. What are the modes? Here we go. So what are the modes of transmission for HIV? Okay. So there's lots of different modes. I didn't put everything here. I didn't put like, you know, sharing needles or this or that and whatnot. Um, so blood, obviously, is the biggest thing. Blood, 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 blood. And then you hear semen. Well, why semen? There's blood in semen. There's blood in pre-seminal fluid. There are vaginal secretions. There's rectal bleeding, and that's a big one when I mentioned earlier about the um, uh, anal, anal sex, which could be from woman and, and, and a man or man on man or what whatnot, and as well as breast milk. So I want to mention two things in this. Number one, a mother who is carrying a child can transmits a very low rate. I forget the rate. I want to say six, 6%. It's if they catch it. And that's why they say in your visits, why they want to test you for HIV, because then you can start prophylactically treating and it's going to lower the risk so much more. Um, I think it's six to 9%. Just know it's low. It's a, it is low. Um, and then breast milk does have, um, so if you are HIV positive, they will um, let you know, don't breastfeed your child, please, um, for that reason. But I want to go back to the rectal bleeding. And that, I want you to critically think about that. So when you think about the rectum and the size of the rectum, it's, it's not... Um, there's a lot of potential tearing that can be involved. So whether it's a, like I said, it doesn't matter what sex back and forth, whatever you mean, anal sex is, can happen between a man and a woman and a man and a man. But there's a lot more chance for tearing, which means there's a lot more chance for bleeding. So that I want you to think about. 
um, because that is important. Because people might ask, well, why, why, um, how could this have happened? We only had anal sex. Well, did you use a condom? Did it break? This and that. So that's important to know. Okay. Um, moving along here, how many steps are there in the HIV replication process? And this is a part where I'm going to be adding on to um, from your book. I forget what page it is, but I took a picture of it, sent it to my phone. I'm going to have it in the background. I'm going to explain it. It's going to be today or tomorrow because I didn't expect to have to do this. And I plan my days super tight because I just, as you all know, we all have a lot going on. Um, I really, I want you to get this. I think this is um, a huge part of the bread and butter because Again, if you can see, okay, so first of all, the answer is seven. So there's seven, um, HIV is tricky. It is a tricky little one. It basically allows um, your CD4 cells and your T helper cells. And there's, there's, there's a cascade, if you will, that allows the, the HIV virus to go inside of the cell, replicate, the DNA is involved, RNA is involved. And I want you to make that connection with that seven part replication process, as well as what medications do in order to make that not happen in order for you to be able to have HIV and stay alive for a long, 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 long time. So I will do that. It's probably going to be tomorrow because I don't want to, I'm, I'm a human being as well. And I don't, I don't want to not do it if, if I am not going to do it and explain it correctly. And I did not expect to have to do this because I did not expect my computer to die. So this is kind of taking that time that would have done. Um, but it's okay because your quiz is on Friday and it's going to be fine and you're all going to do very, very well. Okay. True or false? If you are exposed to, HIV, to the HIV virus, are you automatically going to get the virus? I really like this question because it's false. You know? So, I mean, and I'm not saying, you know, let's go around and try to expose ourselves, obviously, but... I have been, I, my first year of work was actually in a, a gynecological uh, area and there have been people, and I've just in general working in the industry of nursing, there are people that have, have had relations, sexual relations with people who have had, had HIV who do not get HIV. A woman is more susceptible, again, because of tearing, your vaginal area can tear more easily, um, we're all adults here, when a penis enters the vagina. Um, and then if, especially if a condom is not used, obviously, or if the condom breaks, then we all know what could happen from there. As well as what did we just say about semen? Semen has blood in it. So a woman would be much more prone than a man. So if, if a woman had HIV and had sex with a man that was HIV negative, they're less likely to get it. But just because you have, you were exposed or you had sex or whatnot and you didn't even know, you may not get it. I don't know the, the statistics on it. All I know is that I, I know cases and I'm aware of it. And I'm not, please, I'm not saying run around and tell all your friends like, oh, you may not get HIV. You just, I, I think it's important to be aware of that. All right, moving on to the next column. True or false, AIDS develops after a long period of untreated HIV, and that is absolutely true. Unfortunately, if you have HIV, which we'll talk about later how long you can have HIV, and you won't even know you could, unless you were tested, um, if you don't treat the HIV with the medication, HIV is just going to keep spreading, 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 replicating and causing and killing and, and taking over your immune system to where you're not gonna be able to fight off infections and um, anything that has to do with the immune system. Therefore, you're going, going to go from HIV to AIDS. And we'll, that's another question as well. So we'll get a little deeper into that. Would it be safe to say with so many having the virus and not being tested that several people in the population are infected with the HIV virus? And it absolutely would. Yeah. I mean, if, if, and this is more of a, I'm not saying, oh, this many people have it. Oh my God. Just, it's more of a thinking to yourself kind of conversation of, well, if so many people, there, 30% of people that get, this is what I do know, 30% of people that are tested for HIV do not come back for the results. They're terrified. They're scared. They don't want to know. So it, we have a lot of people in the community that 
actually have HIV because it's not, I mean, like a rash on their forehead. You, you don't, you don't necessarily see it until it becomes AIDS. And then they may obviously, you know, have AIDS wasting syndrome, um, you know, the certain types of cancer, the carposy, um, cancer on the skin, things like that, that could be more recognizable. But yes, um, there are probably a lot of people with HIV right now that don't know that they have HIV um, because they are too afraid to get tested. And, and, um, I mean, I can understand that, but it's also important to know because you could also be infecting other people. So why do we use more than one medication to help treat HIV? And that is basically, I mean, in the big picture, all the medications work differently. And this is the, the why I'm making the second video um, tomorrow, probably. Maybe later if I have a boost of energy and I can go more than a 12-hour workday. Um, but I worked a 17 yesterday. So I'm, and I'm not feeling great actually either. So again, I want to give them my all because I feel that you, deserve that. Um, cause I think it's such an important part of it. So the medications are basically working on different parts of different cells in order to stop the replication of HIV. And they all do something different, which is, and of course you all know, I love medication. So it's really, really, really cool to learn what it's actually doing. And I think most of you know, it's gone down from like 20 pills a day to like four, maybe three. I've, I've had several HIV uh, positive patients and they're, they, they've been mixing the medication. So instead of taking three, now you take one because they put all of them together and all sorts of uh, interesting things. I did post a video also on the, um, on, on the canvas, on canvas about um, medications and the medication that is one of the newest medications that helps, well, Basically, if you have HIV and you have sex with your partner unprotected, it protects them um, from not actually having the disease transmitted. So I put that up there for you as well to look at if you're interested. Okay, nursing diagnosis. Identify potential hazards in, in a patient's environment and elements or to modify... Can't even see the end of that. Basically, we're looking for safety here. We don't want our patients, we want to eliminate as many accidents and injuries as possible, right? Because we want to avoid blood from being around. And we also want to avoid, um, you know, someone's in your house. Like, I think we talked about it yesterday, home health aid, like coming to your house and saying, okay, this would be safer to do this because we don't want you to fall and then blood exposure would be happening. So that's just food for thought. Next. What does the latent stage mean? And the latent stage, I think, is important. I think that's important to know because it means that no symptoms are taking place. There's no symptoms of anything happening. Um, and I think I mentioned it somewhere else, but I'm going to mention it right now. When you first, let's say, um, person A has sex with person B today. And person A has HIV and person B does not. What will usually happen is the next few days, person B who, who was not infected with HIV and let's say unfortunately did now get infected with HIV is going to feel flu-like flu symptoms, maybe some of the inflamed lymph nodes, not feel perfect, you know, like the normal way that they would feel and, and probably think nothing of it. Oh, just this happens, right? We get the flu, we get a little bit sick, we don't always feel great, and not putting two and two together, and what's happening is your immune system is on overload saying, fix, 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 and it makes you not feel good. So that is the point where your body, person B, who did not originally have HIV, is now on overload, and your C4 cells are basically allowing the HIV, it's basically taking it into the cell and saying, here, come on in, replicate your DNA and your RNA. Let's make more and spread it throughout your body. And that's kind of why you feel those symptoms of um, not feeling well. Okay. When one first acquires HIV in the first three months, this is considered what phase? I think it's the same answer. <laughs> the latent phase, yes. Because usually you don't have um, really any symptoms other, other than like maybe feeling like the flu the first few days, you're, there, there's no symptoms happening. This is latent. Um, 
And the next question, I believe, explains that if I'm not correct. True or false? One becomes infected with HIV, it is unlikely they will feel any type of symptoms or anything. So, false. We just talked about that. Um, if you're infected with HIV, you will usually feel flu like symptoms in the first couple of days of con contracting the um, disease. How many years can one go with having the HIV virus and having no symptoms? This seems to be kind of the, oh my gosh, in the room yesterday from what I felt, because there is, it's a long time. And if you did not read the chapter yet, you'll, you'll see why, um, eight to 12 years. So eight to 12 years, somebody can go without even realizing. So right now there can be somebody who has been infected for five years in a relationship, married, Let's just pretend they have no kids because usually then you would find out because you had a blood test or whatever. And they just didn't even think about it. And then all of a sudden they get pregnant, have a baby going, get tested, you're six, and now they have HIV. They didn't know. They don't know how long they've had it. They start on medication. It's, it's a really scary number to know, um, eight to 12 years without even knowing that you had it. And in that time, you could be infecting others, which then goes on to more so where you have to then... Um, it, I said it yesterday too. It's by law. I guess it's a law. You have you have to the wherever you get tested, it has to be reported so that you can try to contact those people. But if you've waited especially that long, how many other people have potentially been affected? I mean, we do have a responsibility in in, in that um, uh, realm of just being a sexual human being, if you will. Okay. In the final stage of HIV infection, AIDS is diagnosed when the CD4 T lymphocyte count is below what number? This is important. Please remember this. And the answer is 200. So once you get below 200, unfortunately, you go from being having your diagnosis as HIV and now you are considered to have AIDS. And that won't bounce back and forth. Once it hits, it hits, it's AIDS. Um, even if it goes back above it, you are now... Um, considered with the diagnosis of AIDS. And unfortunately, that's going to allow more opportunity for your body not to be able to fight even off more things and for potential death to happen, which is why the whole goal is for HIV to stay and to prevent AIDS. What are the two most common ways to become infected with HIV? This is a repeat question, <laughs> anal and vaginal sex, um, which we talked about earlier. Um, why that happens. Why? Okay, so this is an interesting question. Why do we get negative test results when we are actually positive? This is the antibody test. So every once in a while, we will get a test, um, and this is in this category, and they call it a swab test. Let me find the answer or the. Ah, okay, let's pause on that and we'll come back to it. So just keep that in mind because I it, the other one has a better explanation. So what is a generalized name for medication used to treat HIV? And I'm not talking about heart and not um, HRBS. I am talking about antiretroviral therapy, which is now called ART. So they kind of keep changing the names. Again, I'm not going to, this is not a test question. This is just a recognition that, that names are changed often. And um, you may see this in your work or whatnot. So AIDS is usually... The cause of, I'm sorry, AIDS is the you is usually the cause of death if someone dies and has AIDS, and that is not true. So no, usually, well, when they when someone passes and they have AIDS, it's from an opportunistic infection, um, such as um, uh, the type of cancer that I was talking about earlier, the uh, Carposi cancer, where. Um, it's kind of that bluish reddish um, lesions on the skin. I think they used to call it leper, something. It used to be another name, um, or maybe pneumonia or the flu. Something as simple as the flu, um, because their body is not able to fight it off, as we talked about earlier. Why? Because of the immune system being at such a low level that it's not able to fight things off. When testing for HIV, what what is it that we're looking for in the blood? Think about what your body is trying what your body is trying to basically fight antibodies right antibodies we're looking for antibodies that's one type of testing 
because when we test, so basically, maybe it's, I talked about this in the song on here. So we have a screening exam and that's when you go in, oh, actually, that's the last question. <laughs> Let me just see if it is. It is. Okay. So rapid testing. So there's something called a rapid testing and that's when they take a swab, they put it inside of your mouth and, or it could be a finger stick as well. Um, and it takes about 20 minutes to get the results. If you get the results and the results are negative, then they're negative and then they kind of send you on your way and say you're good. If the results are positive, they actually have you go back and get another type of testing, either an antigen or an antibody testing, because there's three different ways of testing for HIV. Um, we all know the important thing to take away from this is that we know that they have a swab that is more of a screening test or the little prick of blood screening test. That is more important to understand that there's the screening and then there's more of the test and the tests that will give you the most definitive answer is blood related, taking it from your arm and being able to tell, has your body built antibodies? Now, does that make sense? We just talked about immunity now for the last two weeks, I think it is. Um, so does your, did your body build antibodies in order to try to fight, even though unfortunately you cannot fight the HIV virus? Um, do you have those antibodies? And then they also have the antigen test, which is, do you have the antigen, which is HIV, and they can actually see that cell. So those are how, they're when they're looking at the test, that's what they're looking for. Okay, so that is what we did yesterday with Jeopardy. Um, everybody did such a great job. Everybody was very, very um, active in it. And in the beginning of the game, I told everyone that you get if you participate, even if you're wrong, you get 0.15. I, I remember I can only give so much. So like you get 0.15 um, of extra credit. Um, obviously that's not fair because some of you can't be there. I'm giving everybody 0.15 in the class. So just wanted you to know that. Um, I hope this was kind of a nice general overview. Please read the chapter. Please watch the video that I make either later today or tomorrow. And, um, the quiz on Friday should be, I think pretty, again, I'm looking for the, more of the basics. I want you to understand the basics of HIV so that you could sit down with somebody and you don't need to get to the nitty gritty. They probably don't even want to know the nitty gritty, but they want to know the importance of certain things. So anyhow, um, I do have a discussion board currently still going about immunity. This counts for that as well. And if you're watching this, I'm also going to post this later. I unfortunately have something I cannot change Monday morning. I did not find out about it till today. So there will be no class on Monday. I will pre-record and also keep the discussion board up. We're talking about hematology. Um, my apologies. I'm so sorry. I will make sure that it is up by the time um, class would normally be, which would be Monday at 8 a.m. And the discussion board will continue and we will go from there. Um, and of course, I have office hours, so if you have questions or need more, let me know. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this so that I can save it and post it for you guys. Hope you all have a good day, and I hope that your new clinical sites and everything, you're adjusting well. Thank you for listening.